Welcome to our Essentials course on the Gospel of John. Over the next 10 weeks, we will study this beautifully composed exposition and narrative about Jesus' person and work. Each week, you'll read a portion of the Gospel on your own, typically two chapters, and then focus with your Essentials group on a particular episode or pericope within those chapters. While there's much worth discussing in John, we've selected 10 pericopes to introduce you to distinctive claims about Jesus, the church, our life with God, and so on. During the meetings with your group, you'll discuss these pericopes and whatever else you found of interest in the chapters assigned for that week. So to set the stage for your discussions, we'd like to talk with you a little bit about some of the general distinctives of the gospel, as well as some of the key claims that John makes about Jesus. So first, the word gospel comes from the word euangelion, which is Greek. It means good news or a, a good announcement of God's glorious actions. Uh, the Bible, as you probably know, contains four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and they all narrate these different vantage points uh, about Jesus' family background, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. And so these gospels, they are, they're part biography as they give information about Jesus' life and encourage imitation of him. But what's important to recognize is how they also seek to evoke a response of faith in Jesus. As a result, much is left out of these accounts that we might expect to find in a contemporary biography, such as the exact date of Jesus' birth, specific details about his parents and his upbringing, and so on. But again, that's not the whole point. They were written by different authors to foster and then strengthen faith in Jesus as the Son of God, the Savior and Redeemer of the whole world. That's right. While the four Gospels aim to inspire faith in Jesus, John is distinct from the other three synoptic Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke share much of the same content and structure. And as such, they can be read side by side, which is what synoptic means. Whereas John is different. It's commonly understood to be the last of the four Gospels to be written. And it offers a particular picture of Jesus with a distinct style, theological vocabulary, and structure. First, with respect to style, John is more poetic than the other Gospels and contains unique metaphors and statements with double meanings. In the Old Testament, God often speaks in poetic language, and the text is set out in verse. Although John is printed in paragraph form, Jesus' language is similarly poetic, which makes the point that Jesus speaks like God because he is God. To this end, Jesus uses metaphors that are often misunderstood or have double meanings. For example, Jesus confuses Nicodemus by telling him he must be born again. While no one can be born physically for a second time, Jesus says we must be born by the Spirit of God to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus also uses figurative language with double meanings, like he must be lifted up which refers to his death on the cross and his ascension into heaven. And a second distinctive here is uh, John's unique theological vocabulary. John famously refers to Jesus as the Word of God who becomes flesh and dwelt among us. He is the perfect communication of God's own self, in other words. Jesus also makes several I am statements in John, which you may be familiar with, such as, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, I am the vine. Again, John is poetic, and we find new language here that reveals who Jesus is and what he does. But these differences aren't just language and rhetoric. John also includes totally unique episodes, such as the wedding at Cana, an encounter with a Samaritan woman at a well, and, of course, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. But each of these episodes are included because they help John make the case that Jesus is actually God. And we'll talk more specifically about what that looks like. The third thing that's distinct is that John has a different narrative structure. The gospel begins with a prologue that explains John's view of Jesus as God's only son, who pre-exists creation and becomes incarnate only to be rejected. Then comes a major section often called the Book of Signs, which runs from the middle of chapter 1 to the end of chapter 12. In this part of the Gospel, Jesus completes six major signs or miracles, turning water into wine, healing an official son who is near death, healing a lame man, feeding 5,000 people from five loaves and two fish, healing a blind man, and then raising Lazarus from the dead. 
These signs are proof that Jesus is the Son of God, as well as signs of why He has come. Then the, the next major section of the book is called the Book of Glory, which concerns the Last Supper and Jesus' Passion. The other Gospels, of course, also detail events of the Last Supper, but John goes into this tremendous depth, and he, he draws out part of the narrative over chapters 13 through 20. And it's here that we see Jesus give some of the most explicit teaching about who He is and His relationship to God the Father. We see this extended prayer even where He reveals the character of His own relationship with God as, as well as these particular teachings about how to love one another. And of course, it concludes with His arrest, His crucifixion, and then His resurrection. The final section of John is the epilogue of chapter 21. Here we see in more detail what Jesus' resurrection looks like. Jesus appears to the disciples as they're fishing and directs them to a miraculously large catch. After this, Jesus asks Peter the famous questions about feeding my sheep. The Gospel then concludes with a reminder that many stories about Jesus have been left out. It's not a complete biography, but an account to strengthen faith in Jesus. So there you have a brief introduction to the Gospel of John and some of its unique, re remarkable characteristics. Our main hope for you, though, is that you would simply enjoy reading this Gospel and that you would be swept up in its narrative. We hope that it opens up these whole new vantage points into who Jesus is, what He's done for us, and our prayer throughout all of this 10-week period is that you would begin uh, to encounter God in a new way as you read and gather for discussion. Thanks so much and enjoy the Gospel of John. Thank you.